Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. Cube Monk, featuring the world's first smart cube. Track your goods with our advanced GPS system. Welcome to the future of moving and relocation at cubemonk.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Insured Nomads provides protection and peace of mind with health insurance, travel insurance, group, or tailored insurance for the globally mobile. Visit us at insurednomads.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. This is Ed Cohen in San Diego, California. Once again, you're on Global TV Talk Show, a news product of globalbusinessnews.net. In 2003, globalbusinessnews.net arrived on the scene from a good friend of mine who worked as a developer at Intel up in Silicon Valley. And uh, since then, I've been on my own floundering about, and I've been really helped by producer Paul Johnston and some other people who actually knew what they were doing. And so we've started this TV show, what I call TV, because you're on camera. So you need to be camera ready (laughs) because the whole world is seeing this across the next year. Our distribution is extended, extended shelf life, 12 months, free access, free download, 24 seven, nonstop global PR for the show, but also for our guests and their information and their brand. And so we ask you to jump in, ask a question on the chat, or contact me personally at leisure using the email publisher at globalbusiness.media, and that'll get right to me. So I want to welcome VVH, who's coming to us from London, uh, and she's the founder and CEO, or the co-founder and CEO of Alto Vista, Vita? Alto Vita. Alto Vita. Vita. And with us from uh, Naples, Italy, is uh, Dino Isernia from A to Z Relocations. He's also one of the founding members of the Association of Italy Relocation. And so we're going to ask him to get uh, involved in a chat with me about that. First of all, Vivi H., it's a delight to meet you and thank you. I've heard so much about Alto Vita. And so what does Alto Vita mean? Oh, it's, it's <clears throat> interesting that I get this question uh, and we have someone from Italy present uh, because Alto Vita is grammatically incorrect in Italian and also in Latin. Um, but the, the genesis of Alto Vita was born because uh, my co-founder, Carolina and I, we, we wanted to, uh, to use a Latin word uh, with both very linguists. Uh, she speaks a lot of European language. I speak a lot of Asian languages. And we think that <clears throat> if we use English word, then a lot of uh, people in Japan would probably struggle to pronounce it. So we thought Latin would be great. Uh, and we love the word, the word alto because it means high. And um, our, we want to perceive Alta Vita as a company that gives you access to high life, whatever that means it could be. Uh, luxury for some people, or it could be convenience for, for some other. And um, actually, in terms of SEO, it's been proving quite 
affected because uh, it's grammatically incorrect and therefore no one else has used it. Uh, and <laughs> if you Google Alta Vita, it always comes up first. And as a young, uh, fresh, innovative company, uh, you know, when we started three, four years ago, that was handy. Now, when you Google Alta Vita, we're definitely um, top of the page, but, but back then as well. So, so yeah, so that's the genesis and the origin of Alta Vita. So you went to uh, University of Michigan, is that correct? Ann Arbor? Yes, I did. Yeah, and you've worked <laughs> all over the world, as I read in your LinkedIn page. And, yeah, and that right. was uh, in your role as an investment banker? Yeah. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I am from Indonesia. Um, I'm actually Chinese Indonesian, uh, if we, you know, really dissect my origin, my, um, my grandfather moved with my great-grandmother at the turn of the Qing dynasty. Um, <clears throat> and they moved to this island called, called Bali. I'm, I'm sure you, you know uh, this island. I've never been there. Well. So when, oh. when was the Qing dynasty? I think it was around in 1918, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when it, it kind of collapsed and period of uncertainty in, in Chinese history uh, before it became the um, nationalist party in the modern China, as we see today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so they, they moved to Indonesia uh, in 1920s, I think. And then, so I'm a third generation uh, of Chinese in Indonesia. And my parents sent me and my siblings to Perth, Western Australia for boarding school. Um, and that's when I learned English and for some reason, I just felt like it was isolated and, and small. Also, Perth, looking back, it's such a beautiful city, and I, I feel really blessed to to have gone to school there. Um, but uh, so yeah, so I was intrigued by the U.S. and you know everything American, like any teenagers in, in the '90s. <laughs> and so I applied to a lot of schools in the U.S. Um, because I had graduated almost in the winter time. Uh, it was very limited number of uh, universities that would accept a winter. Uh, entrance. So Michigan was one of them and you know uh, it had a really good reputation for a business school um, so I went there in the middle of winter in January. I landed on January 1st um, literally on um, the, air, the only area in uh, where you can see by the ice where it's not covered in snow. <laughs> so, right. so that's right. <clears throat> so, my first so you went thing. from down under in beautiful weather uh, That's right. <laughs> to, to the Arctic. Almost, arguably speaking, yes. I can yes, call the state uh, in the U.S. Yeah, I know. Well, they were having polar vortexes even back then. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, uh -huh. which is, which is equ equally nasty during the winter. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I've been in California, Southern California here on the Mexican border, uh, mm -hmm. since uh, 1980. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, uh, it's all, it's enabled me to live a hundred years, you know, so. so I <laughs> Did you move going. there for the weather? Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> no, and all, always for the surfboards too. Yes. Oh, nice, yeah. lovely. But, but my heart, as you can see here, is uh, Italian. Italia. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got, uh, Dino, I got this in Cortona in, in a tourist shop uh, oh, you know, sure. up, up on the hill there. Yeah. Right. Just, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vivi, um, corporate housing, mm -hmm. the business travel lodging, is a crowded, crowded area. And so how come you thought, <laughs> or how did you brainwash yourself into thinking you could succeed <laughs> in such a crowded market? Wow, interesting. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you, you asked me a question before about um, Michigan and, <clears throat> and uh, my first job was in investment banking. So, so I had moved, um, a lot in my life. So from Indonesia to Perth in Australia and then Michigan, my first job, I was recruited by Credit Suisse. Um, so I moved to New York. And after that, I was just intrigued by different locations in the world. So, so I moved myself to, well, I was relocated uh, with fully managed package relocation um, from New York to Hong Kong. And then after that, from Hong Kong to London. 
So I, I'm, I've been stuck here, uh, essentially. Since then, I, I fell in love with, with London. I fell in love with uh, how clean it is here and the culture, the architecture, and the fact that you're, you know, you're just like three hour train away from Paris and you can access here when you're door doorstep. So I, uh, I have moved a lot in my life. I've lived in a lot of cities before. I've also uh, been to a lot of wine regions, not Italian wine just yet, that's on my, my high, top priority to do this, uh, but, but I've lived even in, um, in Hermitage, uh, you know, it's a wine region uh, in, in, in France. Um, and so I have affinity to traveling, uh, to, to relocating, uh, food, travel, and, and, and the same with my co-founder, Carolina. We, we share that same vision, DNA, when it comes to Alta Vita, and it's just been a beautiful journey since we co-founded the company about three to four years ago. Um, <clears throat> when we created Alta Vita, we didn't first attack corporate housing. Actually, we didn't even know what corporate housing was. Uh, I'm a product of global talent mobility, but actually- Right, you did um, it. Right. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I am, you know, brand new to the sector. We learn from reading, from speaking to people, it's just kind of like doing our homework. Um, but that was where our product market fit was. We came up with this idea, which is, you know, there's a lot of hit and miss experience with Airbnb type of apartment. Um, there has to be some sort of uh, systematic way to inspect properties, to come up with um, a solution that, that does not leave you uh, hanging, um, you know, stranded somewhere on the street or check in without Wi-Fi. So we thought of that one simple USB. And with any startup, we, we went out to the market and tested with a lot of marketing channels, social media, uh, Google AdWords, SEO, uh, product marketing, engineering, uh, marketing, so on and so forth. And, and found out that actually it was always the corporate travelers. It was always the, um, the relocation companies. And it was always the, um, the TMCs who love our product. Uh, so, so it wasn't too difficult to figure out, okay, this is our product market fit. And once you find a product market fit, then you devote all of your resources into solving one particular issue. So, um, there's a lot of, uh, corporate, uh, service departments around, uh, mm -hmm. from, from what I see on your website and your LinkedIn page is the ultimate in luxury and convenience and, uh, sort of like, um, taking care of people and mm -hmm. and in today's world of tech your applications are making it super cool super convenient and fast mm -hmm. to get info and guidance and also secure yourself in a sort of like a cocoon <laughs> uh, <laughs> whereby you your extent you, you've really thought it through on an extended basis um, uh, not only width, but depth, uh, scope about taking care of people. And I think that's why you're, I mean, that's your edge. In addition to your drive and obvious good taste, um, it's, it's your drive that's pulling all this together because others have tried it and it hasn't worked. I mean, the reason why we think it's, it's a great opportunity, so you know, it's our product market fit, is because it's one of the few large markets left in this whole entire world that's not yet been digitized. It's very uh, legacy model driven. It's very manual. Um, how we are different to our competitors is that our competitors operate on this bidding tool, essentially. Uh, so when there is an initiation uh, by a relocation company, they would have to manually enter everything into a quoting tool. And then that quoting tool sends uh, maybe, I don't know, emails to 20, 30 suppliers. And those suppliers have to manually enter everything, upload an image, co copying and pasting, uh, description, ticking all the amenities, so on and so forth. That still happens today. Um, and you know what? Those 20, 30 suppliers, after doing all the hard work, they may not even get the booking. It's fine if it happens once or twice a day, but it happens, you know, 100 times every day. And, and the good suppliers just don't feel like they, they, they want to do it. We speak to a lot of suppliers and they say, ROI isn't great. Why are we doing this? We might as well just work with you. 
<clears throat> so yeah. the difference between between us and um, and our competitors is that our system is um, is scalable and robust. Um, instead of getting people to upload all the images online to our system, we integrate with their <clears throat> property management system, and therefore all of the information is uploaded online, including. <coughs> Excuse me. So no are, you paid, yeah. um, are, are you paid by re a referral commission? Um, yeah, so we operate uh, based on, uh, first of all, non-multilayering uh, structure, um, price transparency, and also price parity. Um, with price transparency means that um, the price that our supplier gives us will be what the price that our client has to pay. And we charge a simple 9% commission to our suppliers. Got it. Dino, how does this all sound to you? It sounds fascinating to me. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, every time we, every time I, I'm, uh, uh, like you said, every time I go to a, a conference where, you, for example, Euro is always a, a, a conference for the relocation management and, and relocation companies for Europe for this. But, for the past years, we've seen this so many, so many suppliers in the corporate uh, housing business and uh, corporate uh, apartments. So um, it, 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 it just kind of in, in, in injected <laughs> immediately into, into the, the relocation system. So it's, uh, it's a service, uh, it's a service, it's out there, it's, it's, it's good stuff. And, uh, and there's those clients who want that service. And, uh, uh, through the relocation service providers or, uh, you know, or clicking on a website and getting that service. I think it's, I think it's fabulous. I think it's a great idea. So, Vivi, um, I, I've been on your site and I see that you have a number of co-founders and team leaders um, um, and, and you're the boss, I guess, right? Uh, of, 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 it's, it's you a share yeah. It's a partnership between me and Karina. We, we both founded the company. Uh, we share, uh, we, we have different responsibilities. So I take care of product development. I take care of uh, business and sales as well. Um, I look at the, um, the funding. So if you have any, you know, you mentioned you have some questions about VC. So, so I, I look after that. Whereas my co-founder Carolina, she, she takes care of the supply chain, global expansion and operation. So, so it, it's it's great that we have you know we we share the same vision, but that actually we have very different skill sets. Now, do, do you look for properties, say here in California? Here, it's a big mm -hmm. state, of course, goes for a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I'm in the south uh, on the Mexican border. Uh, Tijuana is, uh, I mean, literally uh, less than twenty minute drive down the yeah, freeway, yeah. Uh, and I could see it uh, out the window. Uh, mm -hmm. is to see the mountains all right so um just to give you an idea and la is 120 miles north of here and mm -hmm. san francisco is about 500 miles north of here uh, mm -hmm. and okay. up, yeah. approx approximately um so uh there's a lot of apartments between here and there <laughs> yeah. so how many do you have in california right now and is, is oh, this a target mm -hmm. market for you Absolutely. No, we're, we're definitely we're growing aggressively in the US. Um, so yeah, I think that the pandemic obviously is not great for everyone, um, but we have taken the pandemic as, uh, as an opportunity to, to really grow um, and expand globally um, there. And in fact, we've been pretty successful in, um, in growing our revenue as well. Last year, we recorded a year-on-year -year revenue growth of 300%. Um, wow, we congratulations. Had, <laughs> thank wow. you. And we, all, we almost tripled our workforce as well. So we've been hiring a lot of people, um, both on the technical side, so product manager, engineers, um, supply chain manager, operation uh, people, and, and hospitality uh, people to support us um, in the growth. And... <clears throat> And also, uh, the, what was beautiful with the pandemic is that for a you know, very young, uh, small company like us, it, it leveled the playing field for us. Um, and we did this amazing symposium last year. Um, and it was incredibly successful. We had 
a total of 4,600 viewers um, on YouTube. You know, it, it probably is, is, a, is a minuscule figure for you, Ed, but, but for us, it's, it, was, it was a big, no, it was a big achievement. And, having eyeballs and, is what it counts, even yeah. if it's just Dino and me, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and with that, uh, we won a, a few clients. Uh, you know, we had even like one of the top relocation company reaching out to us, uh, wanting to onboard us as their supply uh, in temporary housing, which is, you know, it's just incredibly, what's the word? Proud moment, satisfying just to see the result. Um, and, and to keep that momentum, we will be actually, today I posted out on LinkedIn uh, about our upcoming covert housing innovation summits, where we will bring product development journey life to everyone in the sector. Um, we will uh, have it, it's a two month long um, event actually, you know, it will be divided into four phases. The first phase will be crowdsourcing problems, um, problems in the corporate housing sector. We want to hear from the RMCs, we want to hear from the corporate housing experts, um, other, other people within the sector as well, competitors, peers, um, assignees and then we want to house those uh, it will be co-hosted by uh, Chris Roberts from Ayers um, he's the, the director of innovation and also Ben Cross um, and then we will have the second and third phase kind of a bit more private more uh, smaller we will invite relevant people to to test and and give us feedback on the prototyping and we will actually build a product we will build a feature that solves the problem we identify uh, during the initial discovery uh, session, and then finally, in um, in at the end of May, so May thirty first to June fourth, we will launch the product in five days in five continents, starting from the U.S. day one, day two, EMEA, um, day three, APAC, <clears throat> day four, Africa, and then we fi we finalize with day five in Latin America. Well, congratulations! I'm really happy to provide this platform as an intro, and. Uh... Ayers is also one of our, our larger sponsors of uh, this mm -hmm. series uh, for the past year. Um, so let me ask you, what's different? What, what will be different compared to what you're doing today? Um, in terms of product development? Well, uh, today, you know, we, we have to, when we make any product, you know, we always constantly want to get feedback. In startup world, you have limited resources. The last thing you want to do is build something amazing that no one wants to use. So this platform here, what we will be doing in the next two months um, will give us access to constant feedback. And of course, we're not going to uh, turn around every single feedback we receive. We will distill the feedback and then, you know, make sure we implement those feedback that we value as well. Uh, but, but yeah, so that's, that's what it is. Uh, we will get a lot of feedback that um, will only improve the product and hopefully really take the industry forward. Yeah, that's a great idea. And I wish you well on that. Thank you. Yeah. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. 
coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. Okay, so now let's talk about I'm a transferee. Let's make believe that I'm a yeah. transferee, a corporate transferee. Let's say I'm VP marketing for a manufacturing company in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been on travel since uh, a year ago. And and I don't know when I can go out, but I'm, I'm itching. Uh, I've had both vaccines, uh, Moderna mm -hmm. and healthy. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I've I can't wait to get my vaccination passport, mm -hmm. you know, so I can get on the plane and be accepted in, in Italy or wherever. Mm -hmm. So um, I think once people get vaccinated and survive that ordeal, <laughs> then mm -hmm. um, companies will open up and start sending people out. Uh, I live just down the street from San Diego International Airport and the amount of plane activity has definitely picked up over the past couple of months. Uh, it went real quiet for a few months, and but not now. It's it's absolutely red hot right now, mm -hmm. and the freeways are busy. Um, so, uh, like America, or at least Southern California, is opening up right now, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of activity. So, I suspect that people are going to want to travel. Uh, hope leisure for sure if they can but business um, particularly big sales contracts yes big customer relations i think it's already begun again mm -hmm. uh, frankly but not in big numbers but it certainly has begun mm -hmm. and um how, what will be my experience mm -hmm. Do I just contact you and say, I need a booking and how much is it going to cost if I go to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, on uh, March 30? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> it would be uh, interesting to understand whether you will be uh, relocating or just um, traveling. As a business travel, travel for business three, travel. three nights. Yeah. Okay, so uh, here at Alta Vita, uh, we, we obviously can take care of any client for any length of stay. Um, you know, we do specialize in relocation. We specialize in global talent mobility. So we work with RMCs, uh, we work with DSPs. <clears throat> we also work with um, mobility managers uh, of multinational companies to, to give that temp the first 30 to 90 days uh, type of temporary housing. So that's kind of the area we specialize in. However, if you go to altavita.com, um, it is essentially a consumer driven experience. You can independently choose your accommodation based on the parameters that you have. You know, uh, we also have a commute feature. So for example, if you want to stay in near the White House or the Secretary of State, uh, you could just enter that and then it will tell you exactly where all the properties we can access and also tell you how long it takes to commute with different methods of transportation. Um, we have very competitive pricing because I've mentioned before, you know, there's no multi-layering, uh, price transparency and price parity. Um, I'm confident that you will have a good uh, experience in finding that apartment or uh, temp housing. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so we, we have around seven minutes left, and I wanted to ask you uh, to describe, in addition to your innovation program, and that's really a cool idea, frankly, and I wish you well on that. And uh, I'm sure having Ben Cross on your team now will uh, drive 
So let me ask you about um, acquisition of property. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what do you do? You, you, you don't own them. You sign leases or what? Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's a great question, Ed. Um, so before Altavita, I did eight years of real estate portfolio management. And, and I'm, as an investor, as, an, as, a, you know, as a financier in a way. So I was involved in you know, a large balance sheet management, a lot of capital risks when it comes to real estate. And comes recession and you're stuck. You know, you, you really need to have very strong balance sheet, uh, which I really enjoyed. I, you know, my finance was my background for many, many years. Um, but when I co-founded Alta Vita, I, and also Carolina, her family is from real estate as well. So we, we share that background and we were both very quickly in the green agreement that we need to set up a company that is completely asset light. We set it up three, four years ago uh, and Surprise, surprise, you know, in the 2019, the, the, all the WeWork model was, was no longer trendy and the asset light model became trendy. And I was telling Carolina earlier today that actually we were, or we were faster than the trend. We were already asset light before it became trendy. So <laughs> asset light means that you're not- Asset your- means precisely. So we don't own any of the properties. We have 200,000 properties on our system now, but we don't own any of them. Um, so we call ourselves, we manage the managers, we make sure everything is duty of care compliance. Um, we do a two-tier quality control. Um, so we assess the supplier, uh, how they deliver incident management, their, how professional they are in hospitality. Uh, we look at their insurance, safety, security measures, so on and so forth. And then um, we go and kind of integrate with their system. Once the API has been uploaded into our system, um, we do like a, a vetting afterwards on the property level, uh, which means we look at how it, we know every property, Wi-Fi, business amenities, whether or not they're fully furnished, so on and so forth. So when you and say then, a- API, uh, yeah. okay, what does that mean in English? Uh, Well, it it, it stands for advanced programming interface. Um, But what what it is, is just making just making exchange of data seamless. Okay, so Um, they already have all their information and then you have access to it. Precisely, precisely. So, you know, think of a property manager who managed 300 properties. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of properties. And and they use a system called property management system to manage their reservation, to manage their listings and in, in, on many different channels. So every day, this, the property manager gets a booking. Uh, every day, property manager checks out a guest. And so they, it gets updated in their system. When it gets updated in their system, it updates our system instantaneously. So that's this what we're really, able to deliver. This is really good. Uh, I really thank you for this deep dive into this. And um, so your, your LinkedIn page, uh, I've been honored, is very, very complete. And uh, your website from that as well. So altovita.com, <laughs> is, yeah. is that your site? Yes, it is. Yes, altovita.com. Oh, okay. okay, great. Now, um, so... Do, so basically, you're competing with the other property management companies. Um, no, I think partner? that we, yeah, we partner with them exactly. Okay, good, yeah, good, yeah, good. So, have you heard of um, Prime Stone? Yes, I have. I have spoken to Ken from Ken. Prime Stone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ken and I are friendly. He's one of our advertisers. Uh, oh right, and, yeah. And we're we're going to be doing a property uh, management broadcast uh, oh, in the next, beautiful. Um, a couple of weeks sometime uh, and in fact it's going to be a series uh, oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah because they're rolling out their their new business um, uh-huh. so it, it sounds like this is a would be an interesting combination uh, symbiotic mm-hmm. you yeah know, uh, yeah and so I wish you really uh, uh, mucho success I I, <laughs> I I think it's great and uh, do you know, do you have any comments or questions? Well, I do have, we have a kind of similitude with the, the name of Alta Vita and uh, my company uh, is, is A to Z. So that comes up pretty easy when you, uh, <laughs> uh, 
So there are similar similar things there. Dolce Vita or Alta Vita. Vita in Italy is uh, is a beautiful life. Is, uh, is yes. uh, back in the Fellini days, back in the fifties and the sixties. So there are some very similar to these to uh, uh, to your organization, our organization. I do have a, a question, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, the uh, uh, for example, do are any of your properties also on Airbnb or are they on other, uh, let's say, uh, Channel. channels? And yeah. how do they are. How do you cope with that? Uh, if, if, if you go on Airbnb, I'm assuming that the price would be different. Would it be the same? How do you manage all that? Because that, that seems like a nightmare. Yeah, so um, which is why it's so important for us to connect with the property management management company system mm -hmm. with API. Uh, so if the property manager also advertises with Airbnb um, and also with Altavita, if they get a booking with Airbnb for that particular property, let's say from March 1st to 30th, that gets updated into our system and it will be blocked on our system which means if you come to altavita.com, you won't be able to see that property for March 1st to 30th. So right. system API data is, very, is so important in the sector um, and which is what was lacking in corporate housing. And that's why we're confident that we can- It's also, act lacking. The sector. It's also lacking in the relocation and the DSP. We're all mm. back with each other and-, and uh, Yeah. And uh, obviously, with the real estate agents, uh, the same properties, it's always, and uh, that's, that's a good idea, at least to have a, a system that everyone is all tapped into. And, and that's right. Imminent information in in sustainably, immediately. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. So, uh, my hat's off to you for that. I don't know how the hell you pulled that off, but that's, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, off, obviously, uh... That's Maybe the you, you, way of doing things as well. You have the, yeah, you're, you're really smart, and it comes through. And uh, it's nice to meet you, and I welcome you back uh, someday when you have time <laughs> on Global TV Talk Show. Dino, thanks very much for joining us. I really appreciate yeah, you. Back on uh, the corporate uh, housing, it's uh, really interesting, and uh, I'll keep looking on your website as well. Yeah, please do. And thank you so much, Dino, for, uh, for the question. It was really lovely meeting you. And, and Ed, it's been such an honor to be here. Thank and thank you for having me. Uh, I've learned a lot. And uh, <laughs> I've been reading your uh, stuff on your website and your LinkedIn page. And I'm really impressed uh, with the clarity. You know, the clarity of your thought comes through. And we just saw it right here. Ciao, thank ciao. You. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.